So here we're going to watch some Pat Connaughton highlights. This guy, after watching him extensively, he does a lot of great things off the ball. For any off-ball guys, and most people, the reality of playing basketball is the higher level you go, the more off-ball you'll play, right? Unless you're, you know, a star player, point guard, a lot of guys are going to be in catch-and-shoot roles. Most players in the NBA are catch-and-shoot role players, right? 3 and D. And that's why they get paid, because they do their job. Pat Connaughton does his job. So I'll let the clip run through, and then we'll go over yeah, it. Little kickback. All right, so we're just going to watch Pat this whole time, right? The shot goes up. Look where he's at, right? Boom. He's running hard to the corner. Look how hard. He puts his head down. He's watching the ball. He's watching Giannis, seeing where he's at. He's running to his spot. Spacing. If he's going to stop right here, right, that clogs up the whole lane. You have the whole floor. You have the whole basketball court. You have this whole half. So why not space it, up, space it out as much as you can, especially in the NBA when guys are so long and so big. So he gets to the corner. Right, and this is one thing I want to watch when we're watching him. Catches it straight into the two foot hop. Now his feet, now he can go straight up off of it. He's not putting his foot back one, two. His feet are already ready to go, right? Let's slow it down to quarter speed. Feet are ready. He pushes off. He gets to that hop. Look at the dip. There's no dip. His jumper. Look at the closeout. Reggie is right there. Reggie does a good job. Hands high. No dip. He keeps it at his chest. Ready to shoot, lets it go, gets the bucket. My coach at the University of Oregon, legendary coach, Dana Altman, always preached running to the corners. Every coach you're going to have at a high level is going to preach run to the corner, space the floor, right? So watch Pat on this play. Even though they didn't get something in transition, right? He still got a wide open shot. Why? Because he ran to the corner. He's spacing. He didn't stop at the wing. He didn't stop right here and just crowd the whole, you know, free throw line and above the floor, right? He's spaced. Now he's spaced. Now these guys are messed up in transition, right? They're not talking. Somebody's missing a man. He's in the corner. He's the furthest spot away, right? So this is why he gets the wide open shot. Look at his hands. Another great thing he does in that. I want you guys to pay attention to throughout these clips is his hands are ready to shoot his legs are ready he's ready to one two no dip right palms are facing the passer his hands aren't down and he's not getting them up at the last second his hands are ready to go from the jump he's ready to shoot as soon as somebody drives in the lane he's always ready to shoot that's what he's paid to do that's why he gets his shots up over long defenders no dip lets it go bucket Another thing Pat does exceptionally well that all guys playing basketball on the wing should take note of is the fact that he moves off the ball. He's not standing. Just like how he runs to the corners instead of running to the, uh, the wings and just standing, he's always moving. He's finding the open spot. So in this case, you can't see him, right? But Pat's over here on the wing, okay? Jeff Green is guarding him up the floor. Jeff Green has his head turned, right, completely. George Hill drives baseline. If Pat were to stay right here, right? He's not going to be able to get that pass off. Jeff Green's going to put his hands up. It's going to be hard. He's going to have to jump. He's going to have to maneuver the pass. It's going to be a much harder pass. Look at the wide open. Look at the gap, right? He's wide open. I guess I should let this clip run through, but you guys see it, right? Half speed. Jeff's, his head is completely turned. Anytime your defender's head is turned and you're on the wing moving without the ball, move to where he can't see. He can't see either way. But in this case, the corner is the right move because of the baseline drive and the ease of which he can make this pass. Gets to the corner. Look at his hands. Hands are getting up. One, two. He has more space, so he brings it down with the dip. And he gets the bucket. Here's a little play <clears throat> that they look like they run. There's a couple things that I want to go over in this, but I'll let the clip run through, and then we'll look at it. First off, Pat knows this is for him, right? This may look like he just comes off some sort of screen or some sort of late last minute read, right? But you see from the jump, look at Pat, right? Watch him. See how he's walking away? He's just walking, right? Nobody's just Pat, you know, he, he plays off the ball. That's his job to move off the ball, find the open spots, create space, right? For the drivers, for Drew, for Giannis to get in the lane, for 
Chris Middleton to get in the lane. He's spacing the floor. So, obviously, he's not just going to be walking somewhere. So you see how they fake like Javon is going to come off this, this, double, this screen, right? He's walking away, taking his man down the floor. The lower you can get your man down the floor, the more space, the more speed at which you can come off a screen, right? So his man's all the way down there. It's a little miscommunication. They're thinking that they're going to switch, right? Brooke Lopez sets the screen. Now, the next thing I want us to watch is so he gets his hands up, ready to catch. Pause it right here. Look at this. As soon as the ball hits his hands, it's easy to see when I move it like this. As soon as the ball hits his hands, look at his head. He's looking at the rim. His eyes are locked to the rim. I heard that first with Steph Curry, and I, I guess I had never thought about it. Um, well, I had thought about it, but I just intuitively done it uh, as a shooter myself when I played, right? But he's, he gets his head on the his head, his eyes locked on the rim. He's ready to go. Everything as soon as his feet come around and catch up, he's already he already knows where he's shooting. He's been locked on the rim. He sees exactly where it's at. He's not catching the ball on the one two. And then, as soon as his feet get set, looking at the rim. He's looking at the rim early. And getting your head up early also gives you the time to read whether or not Pat Williams is able to get through the screen. I believe that's Pat, right? Yeah. Whether he's, he's, tra whether he's closer and he's maybe going to get a hand on it or contest a shot, right? It gives you time to read. Your eyes are up. You see the floor. You can see him in your peripheral. He gets that. If he were closer, he pump fakes, gets in the lane, makes a play for Brooke Lopez, gets a little floater, runner, whatever. Right? So getting your eyes locked on the rim. As soon as the ball hits your hands, even before your feet have, catch, have caught up, one, two, now he's in it, and he lets it go and does what he does. You know the drill. Very fundamental, simple stuff, but this is what gets you paid, right? People overcomplicate the game. So Pat's in the corner, right? Giannis is ISO. We're going to see if we can get a kick if they double, which they do. Sagun comes over. One more swing because his man steps up. Look at Pat. Watch Pat this whole time. As soon as the ball is bounced, I think that's Boogie. As soon as it's bounced there, Boogie makes a swing. Look at his hands. His hands, his palms are facing the guy passing the ball. His feet are locked and loaded. His legs are low. Catches it. Eyes locked at the rim. Ready to shoot it. This is what shooters do. Shooters are ready to shoot at all times. Here's another example of Pat moving without the ball to the open spot, reading his man, who's going to be Spencer Dinwiddie in this case, reading his man and seeing where he's looking. As soon as your defender turns his head off the ball and is, is watching the ball, he's at your mercy, especially when you can shoot. Very simple stuff, right? This is very just basic fundamental basketball. Right, so they're obviously collapsing. Spencer Dinwiddie, he's trying to see what's going on. Right, he's losing sight of his man. He should be lower in the floor. He should be one or two steps back. But Pat sees that he's starting to turn his head, eyes locked on the ball. The back of his head is to Pat. The back of his head's to Pat. He can't see where Pat goes. So Divincenzo catches the ball on the wing. Right, this is the one of those clips against the Nuggets earlier that we looked at with George Hill. When he drove the baseline, he slid the corner. Simple reads. Anytime somebody drives the baseline, the weak side needs to drop to the corner. When you drive from the top to the middle, wingman slides corner. When you drive from the wing to the middle, wingman can slide or he can come over top almost like a handoff depending on how his man. But that's outside the scope of this. Head is turned, reads the defender, runs to the corner. Catches it into the hop. Different ways you can go into the footwork. I like this. I prefer this because I just think it's one. You plant off that foot into the hop instead of one twoing. He's a little more balanced, right? He's landing on two feet. Sometimes when you go one two, right, you can get a caught off balance. You can favor one side over the other. You could be leaning too much. So the fact that Pat catches it. Plants right here, that foot, that's the plant, and straighten the two feet. Now I can just raise up, let it go for the bucket. To recap this video, we saw Pat keep the ball above his waist on the catch to shoot it quicker. When I talked about him not dipping the ball down when he caught it, a lot of time guys 
catch the ball, they dip the ball down below their waist to get their rhythm going, get that, generate that power and that momentum to go back up to shoot their shot. Pat, his legs were, were locked and loaded, which we'll touch on a couple uh, bullet points down. His hands were up, and he didn't dip the ball. <clears throat> he kept the ball at his chest. It allowed him to get the ball off quicker, his shot off quicker over potential closeouts. Pat was running hard to the corners in transition. He was spacing the floor. When you play off the ball, you have to be able to space the floor. When you're a shooter, the more you space the floor, the more driving lanes you create, right, for your other teammates. By Pat running to the corner, a man had to be with him and had to play for help side position from the corner. And that's, whole, that's a whole different position than if Pat were on the wing and his man were in the help side around the elbow, clogging the lane for the drives. Pat was always ready to shoot. His legs were always bent and loaded. His hands were always up to the guy passing the ball. Pat moved to open spots on the floor when his teammates drove the ball. We talked about the fact that Pat ran to the corner a couple times when the DiVincenzo and George Hill drove baseline. I briefly brought up other movements. This is fundamental stuff you'll learn that you'll do on a daily basis in college that they still do in the NBA. They shoot thousands of shots. Each shooter worth thousands of shots from different reads like that. And the last thing that we touched on in this video was the fact that Pat locks his eyes onto the rim. As soon as the ball touches his hands, right, he does it for a couple reasons. The first reason being, as soon as he comes off the screen, like we saw with that Brook Lopez clip when he set the ball screen around the top of the floor, his eyes were locked on the rim. He was ready to shoot it. You know, it's a lot harder to know where you're shooting the ball if you have less time to look at the target. So he looked at the target for longer. And the other thing that came up when he does that is the fact that his eyes are up and he can read the floor. If his head is down, if his head is looking at the guy passing, if his head is looking at anything but up at the rim, you can see in your peripheral the help side, right? We saw the fact that Pat Williams was trailing over top. Maybe Pat was a lot closer. Pat Williams was a lot closer. And the fact that Pat Connaughton was able to get his head up, he would have been able to see that, see how Vucevic on that play possibly didn't drop. Maybe he was up the floor contesting, right? So getting your head up allowed for a lot more decisions, a lot more efficiency in how he made his read.